by introducing everybody who will take part in the presentation and give you a little bit of an overview of what will happen. Uh, the presentation is being recorded, so I'd just like you to be aware of that if you would prefer not to, to take part in it being recorded. Um, your name will be on the on the bar or if you you know maybe want to make sure that your camera is turned off. Um, the presentation afterwards will be posted on the web school website with any of the details or information that we've uh, given you tonight and the um, a letter that we we'll post out to, to parents will be on the website as well um, along with the presentation. So this evening um, we have a few different people who will present various different aspects. Um, so first of all I'm going to start off with Holly Kinsler who has uh, very kindly taken on the role of coordinating the transition year for us um, so far uh, to bring us up to this point for the last few months she's been very very busy organizing events to make it an absolutely fantastic year for the students and she will um, then coordinate as well coming into the, the school year to make sure that everything's running smoothly and making sure that the students are all um, being catered for as, as they need to. Um, we also have tonight um, online Colleen Fitzgerald Ahern. So Colleen has been the year head to this year group for the last number of years and you all know her very well and has done a fantastic job getting us to our first state exams. Um, which will take place in a few weeks time and Colleen will continue as year head for this year group throughout transition year so it'll be a great um, sense of uh, familiarity for all of the students going into transition year um, so Colleen will uh, talk a little bit tonight as well we then also have um, Noel Kelly in the uh, presentation and he needs no introduction he will be back to us in September uh, leading the way as principal again and uh, then finally in the background we have Charlotte Kinsler who I'd really like to to thank a lot <laughs> because she's keeping us all on the straight and narrow with the IT and making sure that if we've any glitches she'll um, come in to save the day. Um, so I think I have included all of the necessary little pieces. I'll be back again later myself. Um, I'd just like to ask everyone to make sure that your mic is on mute <laughs> um, so that there's no little interruptions and I hope my own little fella doesn't interrupt as well. Um, and we're going to start the presentation with Noel Kelly and he's going to talk a little bit first of all about the, the transition year policy which is currently under consultation and we'll take it from there then. Okay, so over to you Noel. OK, good evening, everybody, and thanks very much, Adele, for the introductions. Uh, and before we move on, you are going to hear about uh, a very exciting transition year that's planned for your sons and daughters. Um, so I would like to thank uh, personally this evening, Holly Kinsler, for the amount of work that went on in the background to make sure that um, such an exciting program uh, is planned for your children. And I, I can tell you, walking away from this evening, you should be, um, I would hope that parents will be ha very happy with the content that's available through all the hard work that Holly has put together. OK, so thanks, uh, Holly. Um, so in terms of the TY policy, the TY policy has been written and it was a, a huge amount of work went into it uh, from Holly in the background. Um, and then Holly, like any policy, has now distribu distributed at the staff and it's also being sent to the Parents Association. So the Parents Association have this policy. Now, as this is being recorded tonight, I do want to say, and it's been recorded, that the policy applies only to the current third year students. It's for the academic year 2022-2023. And for anybody who watches this video at a later date, you will see that other year groups, when it's time for your sons and daughters to start picking um, programmes in the future, that the policy for your sons and daughters for that respective year will also be reviewed. So this is only for the 2022-2023 uh, cohort. 
So the policy sets out the core principles to adhere to by all uh, in the school community uh, and also the policy once ratified will be shared and published on the school's website with all the other policies because there is a section on the site that um, I have to say that uh, Adele keeps on top of, make sure all the relevant policies are there and policy, other policies that you can find there and other things that you'll see uh, within the policy is attendance, the, the credit system, subjects to be studied, there's an assessment policy, there's finance and there's work experience. Now I'm going to come back later and talk about the finance of uh, transition year, um, but for now I'm going to hand you back to Adele. OK, so next we're going to have um, Holly and she's going to talk through really how she's built up the, the programme to date and uh, just give a very brief overview of, of what's happening. Um, and uh, I have to say that they're just in addition that what you see tonight is only a starter of where we're at at the moment and um, it, it's continuing to grow and improve a, a day on day. So there is even more to add to it as time will go by. So I'll hand over now to Holly. Good evening, everyone. So when I was looking um, to get the TY programme up and running in the school, we had to go back to obviously the core principles that the Department of Education have put in. So these include the core subjects. So they are English, Irish, Math, Spanish in our school. Um, and there's a TY specific layer, so modules that you participate in in TY. So one of the modules that we're running this year is outdoor education. There might be business, mini companies and stuff like that. Then there's a calendar layer, so um, guest speakers, workshops, um, program activities like uh, trips. Um, and we'll go through the trips further down into the presentation. But we have got something planned for every Monday afternoon for the students when they come back from the very first Monday they come back. And then the assessment, obviously. So TY assessment is a little bit different than uh, your junior cycle. You can have portfolios, interviews, project work. Um, so it's it's giving them a chance to experience other modes of, mod um, of assessment that they might kind of experience in senior cycle. So you can just move that on there. So the structure of the week um, when they come back in September. So Monday, you have regular classes in the morning, depending on where we're going um, in the afternoon. There could be a trip, a guest speaker, a workshop. and um, So that might eat into some of the morning classes on a Monday, depending. We do have a couple, good few day trips planned as well. Tuesday is regular classes in the morning as well, and then they'll do their modules in the afternoon. Um, so they'll be broken into three different, uh, I think, 12-week blocks, and we're working on them in the background. Wednesday is regular classes. Thursday is work experience for the year. And Friday, then, we have regular classes. So... The structure of the week is nice. It's not too academic, but it's also a lot of kind of other activities that they can get involved in and engage in across the year. So this is just one of the kind of um, schedules that we put together. So all of these trips are booked. So this is from September to November. I've actually booked most of them for the year. So every Monday they will have something on. And um, so in September, when they come back, they're going to Carlingford Lock for the day um, on Monday the 5th. Then the second week they come back and um, just as a bonding afternoon with first year. So they're going to run a games afternoon just to get that leadership um, up and running from the very beginning of the year. Um, then they'll go off to Causey Farm um, over to the bog. They'll do an um, ecology trip in the zoo. Um, we go into October then. So we have personal safety with Alex Walsh. He's an ex-SAS soldier. So he'll come in and go through consent and um, how to defend yourself, stuff like that. Um, we wanted to bring some history into it and stuff that's local as well. So we'll go do a history tour of the Clondalkin Round Tower. And um, we're going to go in and watch a Spanish film in the Irish Film Institute. And then we'll be going into City Hall to meet the mayor for a personal tour. November, we'll be going rock climbing um, over to Butler's Chocolate Factory for a mini company enterprise kind of tour. And then we're going into the National Art Gallery to do a TY programme that's specific um, to art. So that's just from September to November. There's plenty more stuff booked already from December, January um, for the, the students to look forward to. So it's a really, really exciting programme. OK, thank you, Holly, um, for all of that. So as you notice there, Holly mentioned that work experience will take place on Thursdays. And ideally, students will need to have their work placement finalised before the commencement of the school year. So coming in in August, they should already have their work exp experience um sorted out but if they are having difficulty please contact us and let us know or ask the students to approach us and let us know about that 
The insurance um, for working experience will be provided by DDLETB and we will provide a letter to the students during the, the first week of school <clears throat> um, and the students can give this letter to their to their employer on the first day of work that they will uh, show up for. So that will be um, in, in one of the first days in September when they, they begin their work experience. Um, it would be ideal if students did three work placements. However, it's perfectly understandable that that may not be possible at all to do. But even if they are to work within one um, place of, of employment, it would be great if they could maybe experience different aspects of the work of the business that they're working in within that business. Um, it would just help to progress their learning and their experiences in the working world. Um, some uh, students have been asking us about doing block placements and if this is possible and yes it is absolutely because of the nature of the work some of them can only be provided for um, by block placements so for example perhaps someone wants to go off and work with the Gardaí for a week um, and that would be a block placement um, now the block placement should be done in in a combination with the the weekly work experience it's not instead of so students that choose to do a block placement can do so but we really need that confirmed in writing from um the parent or guardian you as parent or guardian um and if that can be brought into the school and sent into the school so that we can have it on record there for that um and then students would be absent from school that week because they're on a block placement um and then for every other uh week throughout the year they will also do their other work placement on a Thursday. Um, now, the whole point of doing the work experience is to um, develop and grow and get a flavour of different types of things that they might be interested in for life. And uh, students are asked to report and to reflect on their work placements throughout the year, and they will keep notes in diaries and you know write reports on it. Now, it might be a case that a student would find that they you know chose a work experience and then they realise actually this is not for me at all. And I think it's really important to drive home with your um, child how important that experience in itself is because it, there's a huge amount of learning to be taken from that, and you know it helps them going forward to realise that you know. I've I've had that taste of that that job and it's not for me and you know I look in a different direction instead. Um, students uh, will need to keep the employer and the school informed if they can't attend their work placement. So say for example if they're sick or they have an appointment that they can't um, get out of or you know whatever that may may be. As with anything, they are expected to. I suppose on the day firstly inform their employer that they're not going to be there for work that day but they will also have to let the school know because it will count as a day's absence um, from school and the school still need to know that if the child is not in work um, we need to know that they are not there. Um, the school, as a school, we hopefully will be in regular in contact with the employers and we hope to have set up a mentoring system for the students. So perhaps one of the teachers that they would have throughout transition year would mentor them, uh, you know, have a select group of students that they would mentor and they will stay in contact with the employer and see how they are getting on with the employer and that might most likely take place by phone or email but if it is possible at all we would um, like to, to, to visit the, the place of employment as well um, and see the student in, in their place of employment and how they're getting on. So that's all the work experience. And next, we're going to go back to Mr. Kelly there to talk about the costings for the plan. OK, so thanks very much, uh, Adele. So uh, everybody wants to know how much it's going to cost. And we always said that we would be very upfront and uh, to keep the price as low as possible, while at the same time that the students can experience as much as they can. So in terms of the transition here, to keep it as low as possible, you can see here that we have removed the voluntary contribution. So the voluntary contribution for transition year is zero. So there's no voluntary contribution. The TY trips and events, uh, and this doesn't include the foreign trip that Holly is going to talk about in a while. So if you want your son and daughter uh, or child to participate in absolutely everything, um, every single trip from the start of the year to the end of the year, excluding the foreign trip, 
it's 350 euro for your son or daughter to participate in everything okay now to make that better for parents we're going to break that down into three payments that you can pay at different stages so you can pay uh, by the 20th of june you can pay 110 euro and that will cover the first lot of trips then there's another payment of 125 euro and that's in september and then the last payment is the end of january which is 125 euro now some parents might say well that's a great way of doing it that they can pay for it in bits and pieces other parents might say you know what i just want to pay the 350 euro up front that is totally optional to the parents and what i would say here is if parents want to if the parents have a difficulty in meeting those payments i would say give us a call don't you know don't get in, don't not get in touch give us a call and we can talk through it and support where we can support so it's 350 euro for all the trips and the events excluding foreign trips now there's an optional extra and the word is optional there and it's the 24 hour insurance now we offer that to every single year group first year to sixth year it's 10 euro and that is up to the parent you can take it out or you don't have to take it out that is up to you it's 10 euro now from the experience i've had with other uh, year groups that 10 euro is a 10 euro well spent especially if first year falling somewhere or if something happens over the weekend it's not just got to do with school life then the other thing is uh, there's an optional locker if you want your son or daughter to have a locker that's an optional 10 euro and again it's optional you don't have to do it uh, some students like it because they like to be able to go in and throw their bag into their uh, locker and their coat into their locker and leave it there for the day and that's it and especially when they're going off on those trips in the afternoons with holly and the team that they might want to leave some stuff behind them when they're going off and finally is their school journal now their school journal is a different type of journal this year correct me if i'm wrong adele but a different type of journal this year and it's going to be a reflective journal and specific to the transition year program all right so what we've got there in terms of the total you either have 380 euro if you want to do everything as in you want all of the trips and all of the events and you want the insurance the locker and the journal or you have 360. so where we're getting the 360 is you want all the trips and all the events and you want just a, you don't want the insurance and you don't want the locker so that's 360. and as i said it's broken down there into um an optional uh, payment scheme or an upfront scheme and that will be set up on mit and that brings us on to the next page so in terms of mit when you go onto our website on the home page you will see a little diagram a little picture which says mit in the top right hand corner does like the arrow is pointed there to the icon and when you click on the icon it will bring you into the mit page when you go in there there's a set of instructions in relation to how you can pay and um, how you can set up an account if you haven't got one but i would say at this stage most parents have an mit account already for uh, griffin community college once you go in there um after tomorrow by the way so not tonight but after tomorrow you will see that all of the options of what the, what you can pay and what you can't pay and the, the 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 breakdown of the finances there for you in there and i think that's my main thing there uh adele unless yeah. there's something else no i think that's everything just I, i'm not sure did you mention about under the home tab there you have a, a section with mit with instruction manual and instructions if you are having to difficulty setting up your account or with the account you might be able to troubleshoot some there and the other thing is Adele as part of the letter that we're sending tomorrow so there's a letter coming to parents tomorrow and the letter will also be on the website and it's deta detailing all these breakdown and costs and again there's details on how to use the MIT section of the website as well so thanks very much I'm going to hand you back to Adele so Okay, and just to go back on the question about the journal, yeah, it is, it is correct to say the students will have a TY specific journal, so it's designed specially for the purpose of transition year. So rather than have the school journal that they would have now this year or the journal that they've had for the last three years, um, they'll have a specialised transition year journal where they can make their entries about their work experience and their trips and their reflection pieces and um, keep notes and then they have their other stuff for their their regular school subjects as well um so i'm going to go back to holly now and she's going 
to talk to us a little bit about the um, foreign trip. Thanks, Adele. Um, yeah, I just want to um, reiterate this is an optional extra um, on top of the fee that we have planned for the trips that are throughout the year. Um, so we've gone, we got a couple of prices and we've gone with Paris um, as the trip destination. So if students choose not to go on the trip, then they will be on work experience for the block of, um, for the week. Um, the cost is approximately 515 euro. It's based on 40 students. Um, so the price is subject to change if numbers um, often to take back increase or decrease. So the deposit is um, 200 euro per student um, followed by a second installment of 100 euro one month later. And then the balance is due 10 weeks prior to departure. Um, and we will be going in February of next year. Um, so I'm just going to go through, um, obviously there's still COVID entry requirements in the country and um, that's up to the parents and guardians to check out before you put a deposit down and um, just to ensure that you comply with the country's regulations. And also we need a passport um, at the time of booking in June, so um, they need to be up to date as well, please. Um, so this is just the itinerary um, that they sent out for us. So um, we assemble in Dublin Airport for a flight to Paris and um, when we arrive we get onto a coach to the city centre um, and we see some of the sights of Paris. There's an evening meal in a local restaurant and then a river cruise um, on the Seine and then after that you check into the accommodation. Day two we have breakfast at accommodation and we go to Disneyland Paris for the day and then we have an evening meal in Disneyland Paris in Planet Hollywood. We then return to the overnight accommodation. For a day three, we also have breakfast at the accommodation, explore the city um, with some free time for the students to roam around the city. We visit the area of the First and Second World War. The evening activities is in the Disneyland Aqua Boulevard water park. And then we have an evening meal in a local restaurant again, and again, an overnight stay. Um, day four then, it's breakfast at accommodation, a guided tour of the Stade de France. We have a free time for lunch um, at a shopping center Val de Europe, and then you depart by coach back to the airport for a flight back to Dublin. So you arrive in late at night. Um, so it's a really packed itinerary for the four days and they will get to see a lot and also just experience what most other schools experience in, in DUI. A lot of other schools choose to go on a foreign trip as well. Um, oh, I just need to add something as well. Um, for some of the trips during the year, we will be getting public transport, so if students can get a student leave card before we come back in September, that would be great. OK, thank you, Holly. And I suppose one thing that really, um, you know, I would stress at this point for us all, actually, thinking of the summer and the summer holidays is to make sure the passports are up to date, because I do believe that there are uh, quite long waiting times in the passport office. So if you are kind of planning on um, you know, uh, opting for the um, foreign trip, you need to get on top of the passports straight away because the passports will be needed for booking the trip. So that's just just one thing I'd really jump on right away um, if that was your thing. Um, the, the, the last thing that we need to talk about there, um, well, not the last thing actually, but um, for the last three years, the students have used their iPad, which, as you all know, is, is provided by Riggle and it's managed by Riggle. And um, the management fee that would have been paid on the purchase of the iPad was for junior cycle and it lasted for three years. So now for continuing on for the senior cycle, the management fee has, fee has to be paid again. Now, the, the good thing about it is that you pay it now uh, for transition year, but it will do until the, your, your child leaves um, after they do their leave insert. And this, just to be clear, is a management fee that's paid by students in every school that has a one-to-one -one device managed by Riggle. Um, it's not unique to, to uh, Graffine Community College. Um, now, the, you, you would more or less go through the same process as you would have done when you were purchasing the iPad in the first place. You go onto the Riggle uh, online store. You can use the shop code, which I have there. It's also on the website. We'll also put it into the letter that we're sending to you. And we'll also have it um, with all of the information that we're providing tonight as well. If you are having any difficulty um, with um, updating the management fee or indeed any difficulty at all that you might be having with the iPad, you can contact Riggle directly there. They have um, a contact um, page where they can they, they have a help system for parents. 
Um, just to, uh, I suppose, at this stage, draw your attention as well to all of the information for uh, transition year, uh, you'll find it on our web page under the curriculum tab and the first item there is transition year. So in there, we're trying to keep <clears throat> uh, updating everything new that arrives about transition year and the, the shop log on and the code are already there for you. So you will need to do that um, within the, the coming months as well to get the management fee up and running again for senior cycle. Um, so that's the regal management fee. I'm going to hand back now to Colleen who, as I said, will be the year head and she is going to talk a about a few things there. Uh, good evening, everybody, and thanks very much for coming along to the TY night. Um, so um, just again, um, I suppose I just wanted to talk to you like a little bit around the class groups and the structure kind of um, for, for TY. There'll be the tutor groups will be changing from the current format. We are going to two class, two class groups and 30 students in each. Um, so therefore, like we will be mixing students up and I suppose TY is a perfect opportunity to, I suppose, um, you know, meet new people, you know, I suppose, explore maybe different friendships with other people that are they're currently in third year with. And I suppose just, you know, just going forward, I think it's a great skill for our students to have as well to kind of embrace change and, um, you know, to, to kind of forge new friendships, particularly as they're changing into kind of that senior cycle end of the school. Um, I suppose another thing, important thing to say would be that they will probably be um, changed up a little bit again, kind of going into fifth year, kind of the following year. So I suppose it is very good experience for them. So we're, we're sticking with the same structure as we have across the school. There'll be a tutor assigned to each of the two classes and I'm going to remain on as year head to um, the third year. It's like such a great group. I was into them today and full of enthusiasm about TY and there seems to be a little bit of a buzz around the place. It kind of takes, it distracts from kind of the exams, you know, to have that nice thing to look forward to. Um, I suppose from a year head point of view, um, you know, I'm looking forward to working very collaboratively with Holly, um, who's put a huge amount of work into this programme. And it's just is just to me, I think it's really exciting and I'm really looking forward to the year and seeing the students, I suppose, enjoy um, the experience um, throughout the whole year. Um, but I suppose just for parents, I suppose, just to avoid a bit of confusion, like where Holly is coordinating all the TY and looking after the credit system and the, the running of the programmes and rolling out the modules and stuff like that, I'll remain on as, I suppose, the, the main link person. I think the gremlins have actually jumped in there. We've lost Colleen. Yeah. Do you want to go on with the next slide then, uh, Adele? Yeah, I'll do that. OK, so next we're just going to talk a little bit about the uniform. So you may or may not be aware that we do have a senior cycle jumper for students and it's a lovely teal colour. Um, our current fifth years have that that jumper and they all um, really like it. It, it sort of uh, makes them stand out as the seniors in the school and, you know, they wear it with great pride and most of them did and enjoy the idea of changing, making that change. And it's a, a total change in juniors uh, status to senior status for them and it, it, it really it set well with them. However, it is important to note that if you want to stick with the junior cycle jumper, that's perfectly fine as well students can wear the the dark navy jumper as well if they wish to other than that the rest of the uniform remains the same the um still the plaid skirt for the girls or they can wear trousers as well and um, i don't have an image of the trousers for some reason so um uh, but the the normal navy trousers and then we have the soft shell jacket and the regatta style jacket as well for um the school jacket the p uniform the, then, oh no, actually, sorry, before we go on to the PE uniform, which is changing slightly, just a reminder about the school shoes. Um, we encourage students to wear black polishable shoes that don't have logos. And all of these images uh, of samples are available in the uniform policy, which is on the website. And um, there, it's also in the school journal and we'll continue to make sure that it's placed in the school journal going forward. Um, the PE uniform we have changed slightly and Holly's going to come back in there now and, and tell, tell us a little bit about that. 
Thanks, Adele. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate as well, this is not compulsory for TYs. It's in compulsory for our incoming first year. So we're not, we don't have to change the tracksuit. If you have a perfectly good tracksuit, no problem. But this is the new style. If your child is actually growing out of their tracksuit and you're going to change it. So it's made up of a quarter zip jumper, um, a pair of tighter bottoms, which are um, better for PE in my opinion. And then um, a navy t-shirt with a pale blue stripe on it as well. So it's a nice change um, for the students. If Parents you might need to discuss. Um, and um, that will be up on the website as well from Uniform Warehouse, I think, soon. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that's actually, yeah, I should just say, mention that as well. The uniform will be available from uh, Uniform Warehouse as Scoot Warehouse. <laughs> the same, the same um, provider as we've used up until this date. Um, so we'll we'll put that information back up on the website again. I think it's still there, actually, the contact details for them. Um, so, Holly, then the last thing was the credit system. Yeah, so as I spoke about at the start, um, the assessment is different in TY compared to junior cycle and senior cycle, so we're going to run off a credit system. So students will receive credits for core subjects, modules, work experience, and end-of-year interviews, which will be conducted um, in May next year. Um, students will be required to fill in their uh, student, student journal once a week and um, that's why we've gone with a specific TY journal just to keep them up to date on that. They'll be able to reflect on guest speakers, work experience um, and this will also be used um, in the end of year interview so they can add some photos and, and stuff. There's 200 credits available and then at the end of the year we're going to host a TY graduation which will be a great event just to showcase all of the um, trips and all the amazing work that the students have done throughout the year be it in a leadership role or creating um, stuff for the school. Um, there's plenty of things during the year that they can get involved in. And I would highly encourage students to get involved in all as many different things as possible so they get the most out of the year that they can. Um, and then they'll be given a distinction, merit or a pass, uh, depending on how many credits that they gain. OK, thank you, Holly, and um, thank, thank you, everyone. That's everything that we have there for you tonight. Um, I should add that we will add a, send out a, a form for an MS form for frequently asked questions tomorrow. If there's anything <clears throat> after tonight's presentation or if there's something maybe on the website that you notice that you want to have a question about and we'll be able to compile out of those um, and make them available for all, all our parents and guardians. Um, and answer all questions. So I think I'd just love to say thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for all your support in getting us to this stage. Um, thank you. Uh, an amazing amount of work has gone into this by Holly. Um, it really, it just, you know, her, her sense of organisation has just been fantastic. And I really, really want to thank her. I can't, I can't say enough in praise of her. And I'm sure it's going to be an absolutely amazing year for, for all of the, the students next year. Um, I'd like to thank Colleen, <laughs> wherever she has disappeared to in the background, and she'll continue to work tireless, tirelessly with the students to make sure that they're having a great time in school and that they're all well looked after. Um, so I think Noel looks like he wants to come back in and say something there, do you know? Yeah, I, I, just to, it's not to repeat everything you said, but just in terms of Holly, we really cannot uh, end this call this evening without saying that the exciting program that's planned for all the students next year it's amazing and what parents have seen this evening is only a snapshot of what Holly has actually planned so really what we've seen is only going to bring us up to Christmas time and the amazing bits and pieces that are afterwards if any student walks away from this transition year program saying that they didn't learn anything well I would say well then they didn't participate because really it's an exciting and action-packed um, transition year program both academically and extracurricular uh, sense to it as well so well done holly i cannot wait to see the graduation in uh, august of 20 well not august in um may of 2023 it will be absolutely fantastic so adele thank you for your leadership behind all, all this and as well with yourself um uh, colleen and charlotte thanks for coming along this evening to keep the show on the road and i think i've mentioned everybody so thank you everybody have a great evening and i look forward to see the questions that parents have um over the next few days and we'll get answers out to you as soon as possible and as adele said this recording will be on the website in case you have missed anything and you want to watch it again 
have a very good evening and I look forward to working with you all again very soon. OK, thank you, folks. Nice. Good night.